Hustle baby! My name is Philippe Falardeau. I'm a director from Quebec, Montreal, and I have a film here at the Whistler Film Festival called Monsieur Lazare. It's my first feature. Uh, if we had met uh, 20 years ago, no way I would have thought that uh, I'd be making films, uh, certainly not uh, successfully. Uh, because uh, I studied political science, international relations, I thought I would be working in uh, international cooperation or maybe work in an embassy somewhere. Uh, but by a series of accidents, I, I came into this, this, uh, this field of work. Uh, first of all, because I was watching a show on television in Quebec called The Race Around the World, where every year they picked up eight young amateur filmmakers and they, 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 the, the filmmakers went on a journey around the earth alone with a SVHS camera and they had to make 20 films in 26 weeks and I was watching that and I said wow what a trip of a lifetime what of uh, you know you get to travel and you get to make short films and 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 so I applied but I was sure I was not gonna be you know selected and uh, oddly enough they selected me and I was really scared but I went on this voyage and I, I made 20 short films and when I came back I knew that my life had changed then and I was offered uh, jobs to do uh, documentaries and I started doing documentaries and uh, a second accident uh, occurred at the end of the 1990s I went to see a producer with a, a subject for a documentary and he said it's very interesting but we're looking for fiction work and he, he asked me do you have something in mind and I told him well, my, my flatmate was an unemployed for many months and I wanted to shoot a documentary about him uh, looking for a job. And uh, now he's, he has a job, so I'm out of a subject for a documentary, but we could do a mockumentary. And it became my first uh, feature film. And since then I've been making uh, feature films and uh, making a living out of it, which is uh, extraordinary in itself. Uh, I'm making a good living out of it. And I think what I like about filmmaking is that it, it forces you to go meet the other. The other people, uh, the stranger, the immigrant, people you don't know, things you don't know, uh, do some research, travel, and bring back a point of view on life that is your own, that it's, it's singular to yourself. And uh, I think it's com it comes from those years in 1992-93 where I, I did this race around the world where I was the immigrant, I was in foreign countries, I was the one who didn't fit and was trying to find a subject and shoot something. And, and uh, nowadays I, I try to do the same thing with my films. I try to talk about other people than, uh, than myself. And in this last film, it's the story of an Algerian immigrant who comes to uh, Montreal and uh, becomes a replacement teacher. So I had the point of, I, I was able to uh, look at ourselves, uh, my society, through the eyes of, uh, of an immigrant. And now I realize that I have this long answer and that you're gonna have to edit it because it's way too long. <laughs> But this is documentary filmmaking, editing, especially compared to fiction. I think the story is really uh, written in the editing room when you do uh, a documentary. And that's why maybe I migrated from documentary to fiction film, because I felt that I needed more control over the, the process and the material. But I still realize today that uh, documentary filmmaking is the highest form of filmmaking possible. I really believe that. I really believe that documentary is the highest form of filmmaking because you have less resources to do the film, but you still have to tell a good story. You're still tied to these basic dramatic principle of having strong characters, a beginning, a middle, an ending, and you have to produce drama. And when I was shooting documentary, I knew I had to produce drama, but we're talking about real people. And I had a moral dilemma there. I wanted to be true to what they were living, but at the same time I had to make the best film possible. So by doing fiction, I, I, I can manipulate reality, I can manipulate uh, uh, the, the characters for them to be the most interesting characters uh, possible without having them calling me at night, not happy about the work I'm doing, because they're fictional characters. I still see myself as an imposter sometime. I still think that someone in a room will rise up and say, Philip Falado is an imposter. He doesn't know how to make a film. He never studied film and he's, uh, he should, you know. So, and I, I know that it's, uh, I, I, I know now I'm established and I, I can work with some sense of, uh, of security. But uh, still, I have to ask myself every time why I'm doing this job, who I want to make films for, 
I ask myself, do I want to work around this subject for three or four years because that's how long it takes? Uh, do I want to, uh, uh, is it important to talk about that and will it interest other people than me? And so every time it's, even though I'm, I might be nominated for an Oscar, even though I won many prizes with the last one, even though it's doing great at the box office in Quebec, I still have to sit down and ask these three questions and I'm still very insecure about it. So. Um, but because I, I, I feel that I have to apprehend the world and try to look at the world through my own point of view, singular point of view, I could do it as a, a novel writer, I could do it as a singer, but my medium is cinema now. And it might be something else later on. I might be a teacher later on. That's my plan B anyway, films that doesn't work for me anymore. But uh, right now it's my medium is cinema and I'm happy to do that.